The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. We begin on this Monday, November 21st, 2022, with the mass shooting that took place over the weekend in Colorado, killing five people and injuring 18 others at the Q nightclub. It is a popular LGBT club in LGBTQ club in Colorado Springs. I want to play a clip of one of the witnesses, one of the individuals who was there. His name is Joshua. He's a black man and he describes the event as it happened and how he and others had to hide. Take a listen in. As I was dancing on the dance floor, um, I heard shots fired. I thought it was the music um, because there were no screams. There was no help, help, nothing like that. Um, Then there were more shots. When I realized what was going on, I ran to the dressing room immediately. There was a customer that followed me and there was a drag performer, uh, Delusional, who was in the dressing room. I made them lock the doors and we got down on the ground and cut off the lights immediately. We heard everything. We heard more shots fired. We heard uh, the assailant being beat up by someone that I assumed that tackled him. We heard the police come in. We heard them yelling at him. We heard uh, them saying check certain people because they're critical. Um, we, We heard everything. And all I can think about is just everything, friends, family, loved ones. I came in to celebrate my birthday. Honestly, I was supposed to be in Denver. Now, the assailant is in custody. Anderson Lee Aldrich, a young man who is the grandson of Randy Vopel, who is the former Republican California State Assembly member. And he is shown on social media, across social media with the Make California Great Again hat. It's no no coincidence that there's a direct lineage with the hatred that we've seen foment for the LGBTQ community that comes from the conservative movement in this country. There's no coincidence. There's, there's no surprise that this has led to yet another mass shooting because we are inundated nonstop with the fear mongering, the allegations of false allegations against the LGBTQ community Because it's easy to scapegoat them. It's so easy. It's easy for clicks. It's easy for votes. You're going to get people of all identities, all races, black people, white people. It doesn't matter. Hispanic, Asian. It doesn't matter. You're going to find people who, if they don't directly engage in the hatred, they'll turn a blind eye to it because it's so easy to scapegoat the LGBTQ community. And right now we have come out of I would say the last two years of false allegations and targeting of this community by people like Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire. You have Chaya Rachik, who goes under the pseudonym of Libs of TikTok, and they have spent the last two years specifically targeting and causing violence to children's hospitals, to drag shows, drag shows like the Whatever your tastes or likes or dislikes, the accusations against this community have led to violence. And if and, and, and to be sure, in case someone's listening, and they don't have any idea what these allegations are. The allegations are of grooming children and molesting children and pedophilia. Now, I want to get the record straight right here, right now. If you want to target a group that has a history and continuously engages in sexual assault against children, let alone adults, you need to target the evangelical church, the Southern Baptist church, the Catholic church, all of these churches that have documented cases of assault against children, pedophilia, exactly what Matt Walsh and Raya Chaket, whatever her name is, The exact accusations that they are laying at the feet of the LGBTQ community that have led to murder is actively happening inside of these religious organizations. 
The Southern Baptist Church now has over 900 accusations and cases of sexual assault. And we all know the myriad of cases, the hundred, the thousands of cases that come out of the Catholic Church. So this has nothing to do. Their assault and their vilification of the LGBTQIA community has nothing to do with protecting children, because if they wanted to protect children, they would do themselves in. But yet and still, we are inundated all day because they get to run around as if they're some type of moral, upstanding people who simply just care about children. When their kids are prey to the slaughter, their lambs to the slaughter of these ministers who have a long history of getting away with the exact thing that they are accusing. There, how many kids? There have been no children assaulted at a drag show. Your child is more likely to be sexually assaulted at a church than at a drag show. And yet. The Proud Boys, the Boogaloo Boys, all these fascist groups show up with their guns and attack these these groups. These people, these humans. And we're supposed to just turn a blind eye because, oh, I'm uncomfortable with the gay community. Really? Because it doesn't end there. You notice who else they're killing? They show up at black churches and shoot us at our churches. They show up at black grocery stores and shoot us in our grocery stores. You notice where they don't go. They don't go to the hood because we shoot back. Here's more from Brother Joshua, who was at the shooting. This is our only safe space here in the Springs. And so for this to get shot up, like, what are we going to do now? Where are we going to go? Yeah, we can rebuild. And, and come together and this, but what about those people that lost their lives for no reason? Like the 18, other 18 that were injured, I could have been one of them. Like it's, it means a lot because again, what are we gonna do now? How are we gonna feel safe in our, in our city? This was your safe space? Yeah, this was the only LGBTQIA plus space in the entire city of Colorado Springs. It's won awards in independent magazine. It's, I got my start here. Like so many of my friends I've met here hmm. and people that I call loved ones. And now it's shattered. And that's, that's, that's exactly what these cowards want. You see, none of these people are actually brave. None of these mass shooters, whether it be Dylan Roof, whether it be the shooter at Tops, whether it be uh, the Tops grocery store in Buffalo, New York, whether it be uh, this shooter at, uh, at the Q nightclub or Pulse nightclub in Orlando. None of them are brave. See, none of them will actually confront someone heads up. Right. I know it's old school. I know I know nobody actually fights anymore. Everybody shoots. That's because they're cowards and nobody goes somewhere. So they're going to shoot back. That's because they're cowards. But yet they're elevated. Look at look at Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse goes to a Black Lives Matter protest, shoots and kills two protesters, gets away with it. And now he's elevated as though he's some type of hero. No, he is a coward. And above all else, we really need to take into consideration the fight to disarm the left, to disarm black people, to disarm marginalized communities. When the other side, they're not only armed, they're organized and they're killing us. As much as a, as as much as I'm in favor of an assault ban, uh, assault weapons ban. We can no longer unilaterally disarm on our side. We need the gun clubs that support marginalized groups, whatever, whatever. And, and, and here's another thing. Let me let me just. I'll go ahead and go down this road because why not? If these marginalized communities don't start realizing how much we actually need each other because we need to protect one another, they are picking us off because we are divided and separated into silos because of the latent bigotry that lies in every single one of us. I speak so fervently in support of the LGBTQIA community not just as a penance for the time of my life where I was glaringly, blaringly just homophobic, but because it took time for me to realize how much we have to squad up. We have to defend one another. We need gun clubs to protect 
each other because we're going into a season of just open season on us. And they don't care if you're black or they don't care if you're LGBTQIA. They're, they don't care if you're Jewish at a Jewish synagogue. They are coming to kill us where we reside. They're coming to kill us where we work. And they're coming to kill us where we party. And they're coming to kill us where we worship. And so it is incumbent upon us to get beyond our bigotry that lies in every single one of us at some degree, some level, because it is preventing us from unifying and protecting one another. We are not in an era where we can simply handle these things with tweets. Tweets are not going to fix this. Articles are not that, that's not going to fix this. There is no r- reasoning with these people. Their intent is to kill. You have bomb threats at children's hospitals because of people like Matt Walsh. Because they are so fixated on what someone else is doing in their bedroom or with their body, with their choice. It also extends over to the abortion movement and to a woman's right to choose. They've had doctors killed. Abortion providers killed. At no point should we take the stand of we have to be reasonable with unreasonable people. We do not have to negotiate with terrorists. We do not have to offer our bodies as a sacrifice just to be considered a good liberal or a good peaceful progressive because they don't care how peaceful we are. They're going to shoot us anyway. They are going to gun us down anyway, and they are preparing to do much more. What the police state does not do. Specifically in the black community, random white folks are doing now and getting away with it. See, if we don't see the common thread, the need for us to squad up and to defend one another because they're cowards. Can I just say that again? They are cowards who do not want the smoke. They are scared little boys in cells, uncomfortable around women because they've never been able to get one. And that's why they're so mad. They're scared. They're terrified. They hate black people because they feel like, well, they should be afraid of us. Because what they consider to be greatness in ter- look at Elon Musk, Kyle Rittenhouse, Donald Trump. Th- th- that's the apotheosis. That's the, the apex of their whiteness. They're afraid to fight on a level playing field, whether it be through democracy or whether it be through gunplay. Whether it be fi- they don't want to step into a ring with anybody. They want to gun you down while you're praying. While you're partying. While you're at the grocery store, they have to catch you with the element of surprise. These occurrences, they're too frequent for us to consider them in isolation. These are not lone wolves. These are people who are propagandized by the likes of a Ben Shapiro, Tucker Carlson, Candace Owens, and they believe that they are being replaced. This is literally their doctrine. And it spills over into every other category. It doesn't matter if you are Jewish, if you are black, it doesn't matter if you're gay. And it certainly doesn't matter if all of us are fighting one another. That actually helps them out. It leaves us all out there exposed without each other covering one another's back. One last thing before I move on. We absolutely must defend ourselves. As much as I am against assault rifles, so long as they are gunning us down with them, we better protect ourselves and get our own. Until such time that this country does away with assault rifles. Until such time as this country does away with the inordinate amount of handguns that are available in every single corner in every single city of this country. Until all the guns are gone, we would be fools. In light of the fact that we are literally under attack to not arm ourselves. I'm sorry. I have no, there is no requirement of me as a human being, as a father, as a father, 
to sit by and wait for this government to protect me when this government has demonstrated it wants nothing more than to see me get killed as a black man. Show me that. What else does what are, are incarcerated? That's the only other choice as a black man. The government is not protecting the LGBTQ community. The government doesn't even seem to be able to help the Jewish community. I mean, the the, the, the Muslim community, there's uh, and of course, they're not going to protect the Muslim community. I haven't even mentioned them yet. All of the all of the uh, mosques that have been shot up, not just here in the United States, but up in, in Canada. All of our groups that are segmented and separated into silos because of our individual differences, we are being picked off one mass shooting at a time, one manifesto at a time. Every time this happens, somebody writes a manifesto, whether it be a full blown PDF document or whatever they post on social media, they are making it clear that their intent is to kill. And we're still sitting back arguing with one another because, oh, you don't like the gay, you, you don't like gay stuff. That, that's, that's gay to you, right? Yeah, well, you know what? I know some, some of the guys, some of the folks at LGBTQ community who got guns and would defend us. I know black folks in the community who will march and not only march, but will carry their weapons to defend you. I know Christians, black Christians who would defend Muslims and Jewish people. But we got to have more. It has to be a solidified, unified resistance against these incel white nationalist supremacists, so-called supremacists, because nothing about them is supreme. I want to go a little bit further on how coordinated these attacks are on us. They're not happening only in the streets. They're happening in our institutions. Last week, we covered the Moms for Liberty back school board members who fired the first black superintendent and banned, quote unquote, critical race theory in Berkeley County, South Carolina. I want to play audio from that actual vote. And the first vote, first voice rather that you're going to hear is one of the black school board members who maintained their, her seat, but did not have enough majority. It was now a 6-3 majority uh, in favor of these Moms for Liberty reactionary extremists who got elected. And the very first thing they did, the very first day, after, I mean, they were literally installed. And within an hour or two, they voted to get rid of the superintendent as along with the school attorney, the school board attorney. Listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, you are being fooled by these six. Watch what's the next motion. The, the next. Watch the motion. Listen carefully. I'm, you all have been I'm sandbagged. I make a motion to terminate the employment of Mr. Dion Jackson, the superintendent of the Berkeley County School District, effective immediately. Do we have a second? Thank you. I'd like to know the justification and the rationale reasoning for firing an individual who just was proficient in his first annual evaluation. What's the reason, Mr. Chairman? You made the motion. What's the reason? Why, why are we terminating his employment? Mr. Barrow, I'm not going to discuss personnel matters in open session. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. The motion carries six to three. It is unbelievable that on the first night of a new board that such things would come up. Unbelievable. We have another motion. We have Mr. Another Chairman. Motion. The second motion that is not included in that recording was a motion to hire uh, a new attorney for the school board, which means that before these people were even installed, these six Moms of Liberty activists who were elected to the, the school board, before they were even installed, they had prepared a docket of who they wanted to fire and who they were going to hire, which means they had meetings that went beyond the scope or were held outside of the scope, rather, of the school board. These people are not playing with us. I do my best to keep a level head on this podcast because I have a tendency to really just call it as it is. And if I, if I were to call it as it is, 
not only do we need to arm ourselves to defend ourselves, but if we are not organized at the school board level, we have already lost. We must begin to organize at the school board level, and that requires funding and that requires organizations, liberal and progressive organizations to stop operating in silos and stop hoarding all of not only their wealth, but their data. It's like none of these organizations work together cohesively to mount a defense against what these people are doing. These people are organized. They not only were able to get people out during the pandemic to protest and make it seem like the wearing of a, I mean, they are so organized that they were able to vilify masks so much during this pandemic that now we are living in a perpetual state of death we're living in a perpetual state of new variants and we're living in a state of denialism and revisionism. They are they are literally trying to write out of the history of the United States of this globe of this of this world. The fact that there was a, even a real pandemic. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people who will not only shoot you in the streets. We're dealing with people who are not only organized enough to make a mask wearing a mask in a pandemic anathema like we are the problem those of us who want to protect our children we are dealing with people who not only will send their kids out into the pandemic to die they are insisting that your children go out and that does not happen without an insane amount of organizing that does not happen without an absurd amount of money. And that does not happen without coalitions, coalitions that otherwise would not be tenable, but because they have several things in common. Number one, they have the hatred of all marginalized groups in common. So that's why I don't care if you're black. What uh, I don't care if you're poor and white. I don't care if you are LGBTQ. I don't care if you're Muslim. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care what you are. If you are not a white Christian man or a person who bows down to them, you have been targeted, period. And I don't care if you think another group is going to hell. I don't care if your pastor preaches against the Muslim community. I don't care if your mosque preaches against the Jewish community. All of us have been targeted by the same group, white Christian men. I don't care if you're uncomfortable because a guy is effeminate. I don't care if you're uncomfortable because you don't like to see guys kissing in public. I don't care because you know what? Just like they will shoot that gay couple. They have been shooting black people. They have been shooting Muslims. And they are organized enough to not only kill us in the streets, but to kill us in the institutions. Your homophobia might be the very thing that gets the next group of black people killed, targeted by a white nationalist because we can't come together. For survival's sake. I mean, we're really dealing with people who are so masterful in what they do. Not only can they get what they want at a school board level, but they're able to get what they want on, on what they want on a global level because we can't even get progress on climate change. And that's going to kill all of us. All of our children and our grandchildren. If we don't do something about it, we don't have any time, literally zero time, zero for anybody who is going to divide those of us who are individually as our groups individually target for our identities. And then to have someone within our ranks, a marginalized person who doesn't want to work with that marginalized person because that person's black or because that person is Muslim. Or because that person is gay or because that person is whatever. If we do not kill the bigotry that lies within every single one of us and see the common cause of self-defense, then we are going to be obliterated by people who have now given up all their little differences. Don't think all these Republicans and conservatives, they're all so super unified. No, they are unified around their greater hatred of us. This is why you have Catholics and evangelicals able to work together. Even though they used to kill each other in the past, they're able to work together because they hate us more. 
That's why you have atheists on that side of the equation. Sam Harris, Tim Pool, all these people who are atheists. They don't believe in God, but they're able to work with evangelicals because you know who they hate more? They hate black people more. They hate the LGBTQIA community more. Yeah. All right. The, the, the show is almost over and I haven't even gotten to most of the stories. Let's do this patron party. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and get twice the content and unfiltered interviews without any of the commercial interruptions. And here we go. Very special welcome and thank you to our three newest patrons. Jam Tune. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Welcome back. Glad to have you back. Jeff R., thank you so much for becoming a patron. And Sarah K., thank you so much for becoming a patron. This show is not possible without you all. Wait a minute. You too can become a part of this prestigious and prodigious patron family by going to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show where you get twice the content, none of the commercial interruptions, and you get access to our bi-weekly patron party, which if I'm not mistaken, DJ exclusive one is going down this Friday, www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. And we will be back right after this break. Welcome back to The Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at TheBenjaminDixonShow.com. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I am... I have to maintain a very powerful dichotomy, (laughs) duality, of being... 38 hot. Sorry, if you don't know the translation of that means I am enraged. I'm in a constant state of rage because of the reality of what's happening around us. The ground that we're losing, the setbacks that we have suffered, not only collectively, individually, professionally, personally, and the setbacks being caused because of, well, how organized they are on that side, how they are able to infiltrate the left, how they were able to neutralize the power base of the online left and to scatter us into a thousand different pieces. But I also have to maintain a level head. Zen, being centered, meditating, focused, because there's no way we're going to be able to win. I don't care how far down we are right now. We won't be able to win if we can't keep our heads about us when others are losing theirs and blaming it on us. But when I look at this next setback, not only do they have individuals who are willing to go out and shoot us in the streets, not only do they have organizing down to the school board level, they have the billionaires on their side. Elon Musk purchasing Twitter and now turning it into a free for all for right wing Activists, extremists, zealots, nationalists, white nationalists, white so-called supremacists. He's even invited. Actually, he's opened up the door. He's returned Donald Trump. Donald Trump's account is active, but Donald Trump hasn't used it. And here is why. Here's out out of the mouth of Donald Trump himself, why he's not coming back to Twitter, at least not immediately. Uh, I I don't see it because I don't see any reason for it. Uh, They have a lot of problems at Twitter. You see what's going on. It may make it. It may not make it. But the problems are incredible. Uh, The engagements are negative. And you have a lot of bots and you have a lot of fake accounts, which I think they should get on. But Truth Social has taken the place for a lot of people. And I don't see them going back onto Twitter. So Donald Trump, keeping to his commitment to Truth Social, he's contractually obligated to not post anywhere else on social media for six hours after he posts on Truth Social. So this is not just him trying to stick it to Elon Musk. He's contractually obligated to um, say less on Twitter. But that hasn't stopped the onslaught of right wing reactionaries. They're even trying to get their they're imploring Uh, Elon Musk to reinstate Alex Jones. And Elon Musk is doing all these things by giving the impression that this is the will of the people. He ran a a, a fake poll 
And when I mean fake poll, it's not a statistically significant scientific poll, especially because when you look at Elon Musk account and you analyze it, he has somewhere near 70 million fake bots, fake accounts. But he ran the poll. And because the majority of those people said that Donald Trump should return, he opened up Donald Trump's account, giving him a nice amount of distance to say it wasn't his choice. It was the will of the people. Yeah. Yeah. So, folks, we are the situation is not much better than it was at the beginning of the pandemic. Actually, I would argue that our situation is worse. And this is why I asked you last week, am I delusional for still believing we have a chance? Am I delusional for still believing that justice is going to prevail in the long run? While it seems as though the enemies of good faith, the enemies of justice, they're running up the scoreboard. They have all the resources, all the media platforms. And all the ability to just go out and devastate our lives personally, professionally. (laughs) Let's talk about this hope in the next break. Not even just hope, strategy. Let's talk about strategy. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. If you want access to that, if not, I'll see you tomorrow.